What's going on, everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture. I got a video today that uh, talks about what not to do as a seller of comic books and a little tip uh, for those buyers on what to be aware of. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Check out all the awesome links below to official Journals Comics merch, how you can pay only $3.99 a month to become a Patreon member of the channel, as well as other affiliates and friends of the channel's link below guys with that being said let's get into this so you know i i always like to make videos uh really talking about my own personal experiences and bringing in them that to my viewers so you guys can kind of learn right <laughs> so i recently had a situation where i dealt with somebody trying to sell some comic books on youtube and i'm going to talk a little bit about the situation not going to put the individual on blast um but we're going to talk about the situation, how it transpired, and really, for those that sell comic books, I really want you guys to, um, you know, uh, take this advice on what not to do in the future if you're ever selling comic books and how you can communicate with folks and, you, you know, make solid uh, business relationships instead of, you know, um, uh, being in a situation where nobody wants to buy books from you, right? So... It, it all started like this, okay? This was from a comic book group. I am in multiple comic book groups on Facebook, all right? Uh, and most of them have the element of being able to buy, sell, trade comic books. So this individual originally posted in one of these groups saying, I have thousands of books, thousands of books from every era that uh, I'm selling. You know, hit me up, inbox me if there's something that you need. I hit him up. I said, hey, I saw your post. He said, all right, what do you need? And I explained, I explained. And as a seller, or excuse me, as a buyer, guys, here's some advice. Always be upfront and explain in detail what you are looking for right away. Now, if it's specific keys, this can be a little bit easier for the buyers and the sellers. But for me, I'm not, I wasn't looking for specific keys. I want run fillers and I collect a lot of runs. So what I said to him was, look, I'm a collector of runs. Um, I collect anything Marvel and DC for the most part, any type of runs from the 70s, 80s, or 90s. You know, it, that that's a lot of books, right? So I said, I also said that, you know, I'm, I'm just looking for run fillers. I'm not looking for anything special. I'm not looking for 9.8s near mint books. You know, I just want decent copy run fillers. And I said, most likely, uh, 70s, 80s, early 90s. Is this something that, you know, sounds like you have? And he's like, oh, absolutely. That's me all day. Um, and we talked about what's the best way to see what I need. I said, hey, look, I have the CLZ app. Can I send you a few screenshots of my runs? And you could see what I have and where my holes are and see if you have any of that in your collection. He's like, oh, sure, absolutely. He said, uh, give me some time. I'm going through it through everything so i said that's fine I, I took about a week before i even sent him screenshots of my runs i sent him about six runs six screenshots of runs and i stopped and i said why don't we leave it at those see if you have anything out of those before i like screenshot 30 runs because like i said i'm a collector of runs guys run fillers there's so many runs that i'm looking for but i took like the main ones you know i took um avengers fantastic four um batman you know wonder woman um, and, and, and I did Namor, uh, volume one, uh, cause that's one I'm, I'm looking at right now too. So, you know, uh, it, it was like five or six runs. He doesn't respond to me. I wait about a week or two and I respond to him. Hey, just checking in. He's like, Oh my bad. I've been busy. Yeah. Just give me a little more time. I'm like, okay, cool. I waited another like few weeks and finally I, I messaged him and I, I said, Hey, uh, just checking in to see if you ever got to, to look at those uh, runs that I sent you. He doesn't respond back with any words. He just responds back with pictures. All right. So he responds back with some pictures of some uh, basically late 80s, early 90s Avengers, uh, early 90s Fantastic Four. He had some 80s Batman and um, he had a volume two Namor run from the 90s, which was the wrong run that I was looking for. So we sent some pictures of that. And then he says, uh, need any more? I can keep going. I'm pretty, he, he even said this. He said, I'm pretty impressed with what I pulled. I found out there's a lot of 9.8s in there. There's the first red flag. What did I say in my initial message to him? 
I'm not looking for 9.8s. And I, I even told him, I'm looking for uh, decent value, you, you know, books that are run fillers. I'm not looking for near mint 9.8s. <sighs> so there was the first red flag. And then he says, uh, let me know if, if you're interested in these. Um, I plan on cleaning and pressing them. Uh, and I'm like, okay. Now that right there was another red flag because as someone that cleans and presses books, uh, if somebody's going to take the time to clean and press books, I, I know that they're sitting there trying to maximize and, and look, this isn't wrong trying to maximize their value off the books. And I had a feeling right then that this individual was probably trying to sell these books at, you know, a higher price than I'm looking for. And look, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. But it, it to me, it speaks to me that this individual did not listen to what I said originally. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to spend, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, a high value amount, which it could range in fair market value for a 1991 Avengers number 342, some random run filler that I can go to A1 Comics for and get for, you know, three or four dollars, but then get it for half off during a 50% off sale, which is actually going on right now. Now, this is what this individual wanted to sell his book at, books as. That's fine. But I made it clear that that's not what I was looking for. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that this individual is probably, probably looking for at least over $5 for these run fillers, at least over $5 for random run fillers that have no spec value that aren't keys or semi keys whatsoever. So I was honest with them and I said, Hey, look, um, I appreciate you getting all those out. Oh, and then he showed me a picture of Namor. He showed me Namor's. He had a Namor number one raw. And he shows me eBay sold listings of Namor number one slabbed in a 9.8. Uh, and I'm like, okay, you're not selling me a slab Namor number one in a 9.8. That, that's a raw copy. And I never even asked for Namor number one or Namor volume two. And I said that, that was the wrong run. But let's look at this other stuff that you have. I told him straight up, I said, look, uh, as a seller that's wanting to press and clean random run fillers, I'm thinking that maybe you're, you're going to be asking a bit more than what I'm willing to pay. So why don't you, um, I said, let's look at this, the Dr. Strange, there was 10 Dr. Strange books from the eighties. I said, let's look at the, the 10 Dr. Strange books. What, what, what would you, uh, price those at? So that way I can gauge if it would be even worth it for him to price all the other books that he pulled or even look for more books, send him more, um, you, you know, runs that I'm looking to get run uh, fillers for and, and so forth. Should we continue this on or should we just look at what I can gauge your pricing is? If he would have told me the prices of those 10 Dr. Strange books, it would have allowed me to gauge what he's going to ask for everything else. This was his response, guys, verbatim. I spent an hour getting all that together for you and all you want is maybe 10 Doctor Strange. I'm not wasting any more time on you. You see the pictures, make an offer, unbelievable. Okay? And then I reply by saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, don't try to guilt trip me here. Look, I was, up, go read through all the messages again. I was up front with you. I'm asking for the price of the 10 Doctor Strange so I can gauge what you're looking for for all of your books. And you know what his response was to that? They're no longer for sale. The books are no longer for sale. And I'm like, okay, well, honestly, at this point in time, even if they were, I wouldn't want to do business with you. And then from there, he took it and he started making uh, uh very uh, discriminatory remarks, very childish schoolyard bully. He, uh, you know, was nagging, uh, called my mother out, send, saying some explicit, I'm not even going to go into that. Um, and, and then he blocked me. So it's, I mean, hey, at, at that point, I'm done. That's on him. He's obviously has his own issues. But here's the moral of the story, guys. This is what I want, especially you sellers to take away from this, guys. Number one, don't ever guilt trip. Don't ever guilt trip a potential buyer into having to buy comic books from you just because you spent time going through your collection, okay? One, 
if you spend an hour and and uh, I actually uh, posted this in the group because I didn't want anyone else to get uh, treated this way or blackballed by this guy. Uh, and I, I like what somebody responded. They said, if it took you an hour to grab those books, you need to know as a seller, you need to know your collection better. And I said, amen to that. That's 100 percent true. Um, so. Here's the thing. Do not ever, do not ever try to guilt trip a potential buyer into closing a deal or into making a purchase from you. And that's exactly what he did. All right. Just because you spend an hour, I don't care if you spend five minutes, an hour or two hours digging through your boxes, pulling out books and that, that you are trying to sell for someone. They have the right to say, I no thank you. I am not interested, whether it's because of the price or whatever it may be. Okay. That's number one. Right when he did that, I wasn't going to purchase from him. Right when he did that, I don't care if he came back and said the books were a dollar each. I wanted to purchase from him. That killed it right there. Um, never, never pressure a, a buyer. So my advice uh, for sellers out there, especially in this situation, like I said earlier in the video, it's going to be easier for those that are selling keys, right? Uh, there's probably not as much work involved for the seller to have to go through their boxes and see what they have. Uh, they probably, well, they should have a, a decent understanding of what they're wanting for the books, right? Or what the fair market value is for those books, right? If you're, here's my advice. If you're dealing with somebody that wants to collect, that's a collector of runs and wants run fillers and they send you, like I did say, six runs, you know what I would do? First off, for me, I would know, I would know how to gauge those prices without pulling one book. I would look at the Avengers run and a Batman run and I would say, I would know off the back without pulling a book and say, well, I could, I could tell you right off the bat that any Batman books, you know, probably from the, the early to mid 80s, um, and, and knowing what I have, I they're probably not going to be any less than $5. Uh, I know that most of my books are in decent higher grade. Uh, so I could tell you that those books are probably going to be around 5 to $8. He didn't, I, I wouldn't have to pull anything to tell a potential buyer that. Okay, Avengers books... 80 to, you know, probably within the 80s, you know, as long as they're not keys, you're probably looking at maybe, um, maybe three to five dollars, anything in the 90s, three dollars, right? That I would be able to tell them that any potential buyer without even going into one box, you have to know your product, okay? But if you don't, and you got somebody that sends you six runs, and you don't want to spend time, spend the time, you could ask them questions. Okay, what's the priority? Do you have a, a, a favorite run that you're uh, interested in filling first? And so for the runs that I said, I would have probably said, yeah, uh, the Submariner run, volume one from the 60s and 70s. Or, and then I said, maybe number two would have been Batman. And then as, as, as a seller, I would have gone and say, well, maybe I, I know I don't have any Submariner. Maybe I had a couple. I pull those. And then I go straight to Batman and I pull a few Batmans. And I don't even look at anything else and say, okay, look, this is what I have out of this. This is my price range. What do you think? Okay, that's doable. Uh, I got $100 to spend. I, I definitely want to get those. And that's going to add up to about 40 bucks. Then you know that the uh, potential buyer still has $60 in his budget. You can look at the other uh, runs that he wants. And then you could go try to find some other stuff that you know will fit into their budget. And that's another question that you can ask even before you pull anything. What's your budget? How much are you looking to spend? 50 bucks, 100 bucks, $500? It gives you context to be able to prepare yourself to make a deal with the potential buyer, buyer and to build uh, the proper communication between buyer and seller. Right. So there's guys, there's just there's no reason. There's no reason. OK, that you should ever pressure a potential buyer because you took time to pull and price some books for them. That's the most asinine thing I could ever expect or that a collector should ever expect from a buyer. And if you take that approach, you probably shouldn't be selling comic books.
And it's that simple, guys. Um, again, it, as a buyer, uh, my advice would just be be upfront. Be upfront because you know you don't want to you don't want to engage a seller and you know, like say they go and pull some books and you're like, oh yeah, those are great. Do you have some of this? And they go and pull those and like, oh yeah, those are dope. And do you have some of this? And then they go pull those and you never even asked for price. So, but that, that's a situation, that's a a learning lesson for both of you. If you're not asking for prices as a buyer and they keep pulling and the seller keeps pulling without confirming prices, then you're, you're, you're both to blame. So to say you, you both have to hold yourselves accountable for not clarifying. So, um, again, guys, you know, this is a, a, a situation where I really feel that, that this individual uh, probably shouldn't be selling comics. You know, and I don't know the situation. I don't know if this person sells before or if this person was just trying to sell off their collection um, at this certain point in time. And it was their first time doing this. But never, never pressure anyone. Um, guys, that, that's, that's what I have to say. Uh, right now, uh, buyers out there, um, be upfront with your sellers. Let them know what to expect and what you want, what your budget is. But buyers, again, you need to hold yourself accountable to knowing your collection, knowing your inventory, knowing the range of prices that you're willing to work with. And you need to make sure you engage in a potential buyer uh, communicating those things before you do any work. And if you do the work without engaging in those things, it's nobody's fault but your own. So that's my video for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment comments below. And again, if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Guys, now I do want to remind everyone, I still have my Patreon-only contest going on where you can win this beautiful Tales to Astonish number 91 8.0 white pages plus some other uh, prizes that I have not shown off yet. Uh, we are about halfway there in terms of uh, patrons. Um, I still need uh, 11 patrons. Uh, so check out the Patreon link below, guys, if you're interested in possibly supporting the channel for $3.99 a month. Price of one new comic book, you will be entered into that contest automatically. And this isn't going to be the official announcement, but I did want to say... To my 3,000 subscriber contest, I want to give a big shout out to Joji, who was the winner of the second place contest. He actually is donating his prize winnings to somebody else. So I just want to say, Joe, thank you so much for uh, paying it forward in this act of kindness. Uh, it's very, very truly humbling. Uh, Joe is a, a, a patron of the, of the channel as well. So not only um, is he donating his prize winnings, uh, he's actually donating some of his own books to a new contest that we are going to announce on the Comic Book Canon Show in the near future. So again, anybody that entered into my 3,000 subscriber contest is going to have a second chance to win that second place prize. And again, I will make another uh, more formal announcement. And Jeff, my co-host on Comic Book Canon, he and I will make another formal announcement on Comic Book Canon as well. So with that being said, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time.